Nicola Sturgeon joined the SNP while she was still at school in Ayrshire. It was a normal working class household. I was brought up to uh, have an awareness of what was going on around me, but I don't ever remember either of my parents uh, trying to persuade me politically one way or the other. Do you know Hi. Nicola Sturgeon? Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. Alex Salmon quickly identified her as a rising star. I'm here to give this lassie a hand today. The rising support has obviously been um, translated across the board in Scotland now, but it's been there amongst young people for some time. Nicola Sturgeon had lived in Govan as a law student at Glasgow University, and she was the youngest candidate in the 1992 general election. In 1999, she was elected to the first Scottish Parliament as a list MSP for Glasgow. I should first tell you the story of, of how the Nippy Sweetie kind of tag uh, came about. It was uh, Jimmy Webster, one of the shop stewards in the Govan shipyard, who first called me that, and he meant it as a compliment. He meant it as somebody who you know says what they think and is prepared to stand up and fight for what they believe in. Uh, so I'm not too worried about the the nickname. Hi. Politically, Nicola Sturgeon positioned herself on the left of Scottish politics, increasingly close to Alex Salmond. When John Swinney quit as SNP leader in 2004, Nicola Sturgeon initially intended to stand, but ended up standing aside for the return of Alex Salmond, with her as his deputy. Nicola Sturgeon, Scottish National Party, 9,000. In 2007, Nicola Sturgeon won the Scottish Parliament seat of government at her third attempt, and the SNP won its first election. So the SNP have won the election by one seat. Nicola Sturgeon of the party uh, joins me now. It's very narrow. It's a tremendous achievement, John. The people of Scotland have today chosen a, a new political path. They've opted to put the SNP in the driving seat of Scotland's new government. It's an enormous responsibility and it's one we are determined to discharge with humility, with imagination and with a great deal of passion. Nicola Sturgeon became Deputy First Minister in the first SNP cabinet and she took on health one of the toughest briefs in government. Let me be clear from the outset. It is this government's view that the decisions to close A&E at Monklands and Ayr were wrong and they will now be reversed. She cut waiting lists and battled the swine flu pandemic, but she was also forced to apologise to Parliament after an error of judgement supporting a constituent who turned out to be a benefits cheat. Ms Sturgeon, will you keep your job? I assisted a constituent in good faith and for what I considered to be the right reasons. But in doing so, I did get some things wrong, and for that I am sorry. In 2010, Nicola Sturgeon married Peter Murrow. With her as deputy leader and him as chief executive, they became the party's power couple. And a year later, the SNP defied the political odds and a system designed to prevent them winning a majority. That cleared the way for the Edinburgh Agreement, leading to the 2014 independence referendum. Nicola Sturgeon was at the forefront of the campaign. The status quo is not the best arrangement because it deprives Scotland of the tax powers to get our economy growing. That's why our economy has lagged behind so many other comparable countries. It deprives Scotland of the power to make sure we have a fair welfare system. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's been a pretty fair kick of the ball. So thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. After losing, Alex Salmond quit as leader. And the only challenge to Nicola Sturgeon taking over was how many adoring fans she could fit in a hall. It is fabulous to be here in the Hydro. Thank you so, so much for that incredibly warm welcome. What an atmosphere. It was a bit like a pop star tour without the singing. Without like any singing. Nicola Sturgeon became Scotland's first female First Minister. I will be First Minister for all of Scotland. Regardless of your politics or your point of view, my job is to serve you. I hope that my election as First Minister does indeed help to open the gate to greater opportunity for all women. I hope that it sends a strong positive message to girls and young women, indeed to all women. She led the SNP to its biggest general election victory in 2015, winning all but three seats. Bursting with pride even to introduce, for the very first time as one assembled group, the 56 men and women elected on Thursday to make Scotland's voice heard. In the 2016 Holyrood election, it was all about Nicola. 
The SNP narrowly lost its majority while polling their highest ever vote at Holyrood. One month later, Scotland voted to stay in the EU, but the UK as a whole backed Brexit. Aspiration Scotland to stay in the EU. So these are initial discussions and making Scotland's voice heard, putting our case. For the Nicola Sturgeon had said that 2014 was a once in a generation opportunity, but with Brexit came the prospect of another push. I will seek the authority of the Scottish Parliament to agree with the UK Government the details of a Section 30 order, the procedure that will enable the Scottish Parliament to legislate for an independent referendum. I say to the SNP, now is not the time. After reaching such political highs, the SNP seemed to be on a bit of a slide, losing ground in the 2017 general election, where Nicola Sturgeon seemed unusually reticent about independence, and Alex Salmond lost his seat. You've not seen the last of my bonnets and me. The relationship between Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond had become strained. She was irritated by his fringe show and angry at his TV show on Russia Today. I can say what I like about any issue, and so can any one of my interview guests. She lost a minister to allegations of sleazy texts to women, and a finance secretary on the eve of his budget after sleazy texts to a teenage boy. Then the story of much more serious allegations about Alex Salmon broke. Nicola Sturgeon was shocked. I'm no perfect. I've made many mistakes in my life, political and personal. Uh, but I am not guilty of harassing anyone, and I am certainly not guilty of any criminality. Obviously this uh, news this morning will be a shock to many people, but as Police Scotland have made clear this morning, these are now live criminal proceedings. This led to the biggest split the SNP, indeed Scottish politics, has ever seen, and ultimately it's her response to his actions that have brought us here. For the last year, Nicola Sturgeon has faced the biggest challenges of her life, leading Scotland through the pandemic with life or death decisions to take every day, and that saw her popularity soar again. I've not got it right at every turn, and, and you know I'll reflect on these decisions for, as I, I say often, probably for as long as I live, but I'll continue to try to do the best I can. But at the same time, dealing with the scandal surrounding her predecessor, I am not going to apologise for the behaviour of somebody else. If I have things in my behaviour to apologise for, I will apologise. But I do not think it is reasonable to ask me to apologise for the behaviour, some of which he will deny, of course, of Alex Hammond. Throughout her political career, Nicola Sturgeon has never shirked responsibility. Today is no different. That's why she's resigned. To all of the people of Scotland, whether you voted for me or not, please know that being your First Minister has been the privilege of my life. Nothing, absolutely nothing I do in future will ever come anywhere close. Thank you from the very bottom of my heart.